Hey guys, the big DLC 2 Zombies map reveal happened today. They did a live stream where they showed the cutscene for the new Zombies map, and also Jason Blundell sat down with NoahJ456 and answered some really good questions. They talked about some of the Easter eggs that we have questions about, and he actually answered if the Apothecon Servant can be upgraded or not. It was about an hour long live stream, and I've just taken the highlights from it, and I'm going to show you guys some of the really interesting stuff. But first, I'm going to show you the beginning of the live stream where Jason Blundell sits down. He explains the new zombies map and why it's called what it is and he also explains that it's going to be the scariest map so far. Director of Zombies, Jason, welcome. Thank you John, how are you doing? Doing well, thank Fantastic. you. Fantastic. So Jason, yeah. DLC, DLC 2 Eclipse has a new zombies experience. Tell us what are we giving to fans in DLC 2? So DLC 2 we're going to the island of despair. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's the only sound I could think of to kind of convey the, the scariness <laughs> and spookiness of this map. So uh, it's uh, Zetsubo no Shima. Um, I'm doing that to mess with people so they have a hard time pronouncing it again. We started that with the Rise and Drach. Zetsubo no Shima, DLC 2. Um, very, and it is... Very mellifluous. Uh, it's good, good use of vocabulary right there. Um, and uh, it's... Uh, being serious for a second. Sorry. It's probably one of the scariest maps we've done. I really? Can't be, I can't be serious that one. Okay. Um, it really, the, the atmosphere, mm -hmm. the feeling of it, the uh, artistry really behind uh, creating a map that is uh, more fundamentally disturbing to people. Now, we've kind of gone there in Zombies in the past. Obviously, we're dealing with the undead. But um, listening to the fans, they were talking about, you know, how do we get back to the roots? How back to maps which are unnerving by their pure physicality? And so... Uh, that's what Zetsubo no Shima is really about. It's uh, Division 9, a group that has been uh, revealed uh, recently uh, in the storyline, but they go back to Shinonuma, which is all the way back into uh, World at War, mm -hmm. and their experiments on this island, and our, our crew, our gang, are turning up there to find out what uh, perversions of nature have taken place. Well, you had me at hello. <laughs> well, I just wanted to say perversions of nature. <laughs> I hear they opened up at Coachella. Mm, yeah. So the new name of the map is Zetsubo Nushima, and that stands for the Island of Despair. And he's claiming that this is going to be the scariest map that they've ever made, and I'm excited about that. I want something really terrifying. And with today's reveal, they did put out a higher resolution image of this picture right here that was leaked probably like a week ago. We weren't supposed to see it. But yeah, down in the building, like underneath where it looks broken open, now you can see that kind of looks like some type of cage. And after hearing about the description of this map where they're doing biological experiments on humans, I can only imagine that this could be a cage where they keep one of those people in. Also, now you can read on the building that this is a lab. It says Lab B on it. Really couldn't tell what that said before. But yeah, this map should be pretty scary and pretty intense. This last part of the live stream is where it got really good. This is where Noah J sat down with Jason Blundell and asked all the really good questions. The first question he asked him was really good. He asked about the summoning key. Now, the name of it is summoning, and we haven't summoned anything yet. And Jason Blundell agreed with him. He was like, you're right. We have not summoned anything at this time with the summoning key. So that might be something that's a part of its process like later on in a future DLC or even maybe this next one. While Jason Blundell was explaining the summoning key, I heard something he said and I don't know if he just misspoke, but he said that inside the summoning key there was the Shadow Man's soul and Dempsey's soul, but he didn't mention Richtofen's soul and I think we're all under the assumption that that's what happened on the giant when Richtofen came in and killed his older self. He like knelt down next to the body and you hear all the audio. You know, the guy's talking about it, and he supposedly, like, captured his soul at that time. But, yeah, Jason Blundell didn't mention Richtofen's soul being inside of it. So, it's like, maybe he just said it wrong, or maybe he gave us a clue, and we weren't supposed to know that. I don't know. I'll let you guys listen to it. What exactly would you count as being summoned yeah. so far in the series? Has there been anything... I don't think anything's been summoned so far. Th that, that's... Because I, uh, I was thinking, obviously, yeah. we've had our four characters that, yep. uh, that were kind of trapped in there throughout the events of Shadows of Evil, mm. right? Well, I mean, well, it's, um, you know, you finish Shadows of Evil and you've obviously got the Shadow Man in there, right. and you've just got Dempsey in, in there. Um, but yeah, I, I think, um, I don't think we've explored the kind of mythical ramifications right. of, of its title. Mm -hmm. And it's obviously... It's I don't know what to think about that. I guess we didn't actually ever see it happening, so he doesn't want to give that away. But he says the Shadow Man, Soul, and just 
Dempsey's soul. So Richthofen, at this point, doesn't sound like his soul is in it. So I don't know. You guys let me know what y'all think about that. The next question was about this shirt that Jason's wearing. It's got the Apothecon language on the back and the Keeper language on the front. And Noah wanted to know, is this language so significant? And he answers yes. I'll let you guys listen to this, which is good to know because, you know, me and a couple of people have been working really hard on it. A little bit of the shirt you're wearing here that uh, it seems to have Apothecon background. Um... Oh, oh, this thing. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. I was wondering if you wanted to talk a little bit about what it is you're wearing and... Uh, uh, and no. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I, so, you know, we've done hints in the past talking about it. There was even kind of questions of, you know, does this mean anything at all? It right. does, and I'm wearing it. Luckily, it's cropped off probably just before my gut starts. Mm -hmm. So... Um, but, um, very very small. I, I need you then to kind of. Yeah, yeah I was, it's I was, there, right? I was wondering if I could uh, stare at my body. You know, <laughs> take it's a there, few right? Pictures of it while yeah. I'm there. But yeah, he goes on to say that this language, you know, does link throughout all of the DLC. So expect to see this a lot more and more answers to come. The next question was about this raven that you see down by the mule kick machine. And Noah J asked him about it. He didn't give much of an answer, but here's what he said. That makes sense. So, so speaking of just this map in particular, just something that uh, I've kind of mentioned before and I wanted to quickly ask you about mm -hmm. is what this little guy is doing up here. <laughs> I, I was wondering if you... It looks like he's eating seeds. Right? And the fact that you can just quickly... Yeah. You know. Well, you know, that's, that's not very nice on wildlife there. No. It's, it's not. But no, then again, we're, we're going to have to... I can't condone that. You can't condone that. No. So what you're saying is we should not, for whatever reason, I, shoot the bird. There's no reason that you might possibly, at some point, I want to shoot the bird. I did not say that. I just said, you know, that's a bit mean, that shooting the bird. Right, right. Yeah. Interesting, interesting. Mm. So yeah, I couldn't get much of an answer out of him from that one, but I just thought that was funny. This next part I thought was interesting. Now Blundell is trying to explain a little bit of, you know, what's going on in Richthofen in his mind and maybe what he wants us to believe, but do we really believe it? I'll let you guys listen to this one. Um, and uh, you're, you're still having to go through what the right thing is to do. Yeah, you know, Richthofen's always been like his intellect has almost <coughs> prevented his humanity at times. Right. And I think hopefully if you guys believe in him mm -hmm. if you can just reach out your right. hearts to, to help him which has uh, worked out so well in the past he for is, us he is uh <laughs> he is trying to put his humanity in front of his intellect mm -hmm. you know this is the right thing to do right um if only you guys would give him a chance mm. so to me that just pretty much sums up all of lock ops three zombies like can richtofen be trusted and do we follow along with what he wants and will he be the good guy in the end and if blundell spoke correctly about the summoning key then where the hell is richtofen and why isn't he in it i feel a twist ending coming on just saying the next question he asked was about these blood vials that richtofen has on him and those numbers match up with two of the inmates from mob of the dead like the characters we play and most of us already know this but yeah noah J went in to ask him about it and jason like pretty much shut him down would not tell him anything so you can only assume this is going to be something pretty interesting in the future for one of like easter eggs or storyline is one question from omar was asking what are the mob of the dead vials doing on richtofen what what is his what what is his deal with the uh the files there can i stand <laughs> longingly into the camera at this moment zoom zoom Hello from the other side. Next question. <laughs> Next question. Uh, okay. We ha Dude could not even come up with a witty comeback for that question. He just shut it down. So yeah, something really major could be going on there. The next question just like blew me away. This was something I know that we had all been wondering and I can't believe he answered it. But like before Shadows of Evil had ever come out, he had put out a video talking in an interview where he was saying there's this Easter egg that we're never going to be able to solve. He's putting one in. It's going to be so difficult to break. And at one point I thought, well, maybe it was the little Arnie's because somebody from Treyarch had messaged me and they were like, we didn't think anybody was ever going to solve this. So I thought, well, maybe that was it. Apparently it's not. I'll let you guys watch the first video and then I'll let you guys watch his response to Noah's question. And the community keeps on finding and keeps on decoding. So going into Black Ops 3, I'm fed up now and I'm going to really put one in that you guys can't, can't break. Um, and they'll be hidden uh, in different arenas and you won't get this one. <laughs> very nice, very nice. And then we have Amongst Zombies says, uh, you mentioned kind of before before the, uh, the Shadows of Evil map came out, before he had even touched Black Ops 3 Zombies, that there would be an Easter egg included that mm -hmm. none of us will find. Mm -hmm. It's not going to be solvable. Yep. You don't have any faith in us for, yep. that, for that aspect. Yep. Has that Easter egg been found? It has not. It has not. So there is still something in Shadows of Evil in which 
it, would, it would be too simple for me to say it's in Shadows of Evil, but I would say uh, there is an Easter egg there that has not been found. There's actually, I mean, there's lots, right? We've right, already right, said right, that's right. Before, but the one there, I there's a significant one. The one I was specifically talking about has not. Interesting. Yeah. So not only is this one Easter egg that's supposed to be impossible not solved, he did say that there are lots that still need to be solved. Not a couple, but lots. So I don't know what you guys think about that. This next question kind of made me nervous because it was about these spiders on the island and if they're going to be any. And that's something that I had started because of like sources that I had. And, you know, everybody seemed to really like the idea and it just kind of caught on with the community. And then Noah J asks him about the spiders and I can only like <laughs> imagine like Jason sitting there going, that's leaked information. And I'm just like, oh my God. <laughs> but Jason Blundell was really cool about it. He gave a good response and makes it seem like, yeah, there definitely could be spiders. I'll play it for you guys right now. We're fine. We've done this no first before. <laughs> um, so an another question that uh, you may or may not be able to respond to mm -hmm. is, are you a fan of spiders? I love spiders. Seemingly, seemingly maybe of the uh, of the zombies variety. I I love spiders. I I love all of the creatures from Mother right, Nature. Right, right. Yeah. And well, we, could could we expect to see in DLC two kind of some of these themes and aspects coming in from? Uh, I I you know I think what we're gonna see is what happens when um, bad people play with the fundamentals of nature. Mm -hmm. That, that's interesting. Mm -hmm. That's interesting, and uh, that those might come in the form of maybe not only arachnids, mm -hmm. possibly, mm -hmm. but um, kind of the form of zombie varieties that we. Well, will there be anything that we haven't seen before of the zombie variety? I guarantee it. Guarantee it. Can yeah. you speak any more on what no. that guarantee that'd might be, that'd might too, bring? That'd be too easy. It's true. It's true. I thought we so he definitely did not deny it, and he was kind of going along with Noah as he was like, you know, describing all these things. So yeah, I think we might be seeing spiders. The last question that Noah had for him was the question we all want to know. Can the Apothecon Servant be upgraded? His answer was, of course, cryptic. We expected that. But the way he answered it gave some hope to it. The way he said it was that the Apothecon Servant can't be upgraded on Shadows of Evil. And to me, that makes it sound like we need to do other things on other maps in connection to it to actually be able to upgrade it. He didn't say you can't upgrade it. He said on Shadows of Evil. So yeah, it makes it sound like that upgrade process has to happen somewhere else. I'll play that part of the live stream for you guys and let me know what you think. Map. Sure. The number one question I was asked is, yes. is the Shadows of Evil Wonder Weapon upgradable? <laughs> um, okay, let me, be, let me be definite and cryptic at the same time. As expected. Yeah. Um, it is not possible to upgrade the Apothecon Servant in Shadows of Evil. I'm going to go like take a lap around the office real quick. Uh, we're going to go ahead and send it back to John. This, is, uh, this has been great. Thank you. So he admitted that he was being cryptic, and he said the Apothecon Servant can't be upgraded in Shadows of Evil, and he emphasized in Shadows of Evil. Now, if he had just answered it and not said he was being cryptic, I wouldn't think anything. But that sentence right there, there's something inside of that that is cryptic. He's admitting to it. So there's still hope. I think it can happen. It might be a situation where you have to finish Easter eggs on future DLC to have it as a reward. I don't know. But let me know what you guys think about this. This is a lot of information to take in. Hope you guys enjoyed this and I'll see you next video.